Okay, so we have a over b plus c over d, and we're trying to figure out what this is equal to, okay? And uh, I love this problem, and I've actually done quite a uh, uh, bit of videos, and quite a number of videos, on fractions, okay? Fractions can either be easy or they can be hard, right? It all de depends on how you want to approach the topic, okay? If you never really, you know... Um, really focus and completely dominate the topic of fractions, then it's going to be hard for you. You're going to be like, I hate fractions. I want to avoid them at all costs. And I know how that feels because I was the same way back in the good old days. But we don't want to um, uh, have that attitude that fractions have to be hard. What we want to know is the easy approaches uh, so we can manage a problem like this easily. Okay, And you need to be able to handle a situation like this uh, pretty easily in algebra, okay? Because you're gonna be dealing with a lot of fractions. And if we have the mindset, oh boy, this is a hard problem. Well, you know, this word hard or easy, there it's all relative, okay? But how do you make something hard into easy? Well, you know, the way you do that is by learning and listening to people who know what they're talking about. And hopefully you'll consider me one of those people because a lot of things I can't do. But the one thing I do pretty well is teach math because I've been doing it for decades. OK, so I'm going to teach you how to handle this problem uh, fairly easily. But just stick with me uh, for a couple of minutes here. So. Uh, before we get into this problem, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tamba Class Math. And as I said, I am a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that if you're interested. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I offer uh, several courses, literally over 100 different courses. Many of them um, are uh, specialty courses like uh, for the GED or teacher certification or SAT, ACT prep, but I have uh, full courses, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, etc. So whether you need to take a full online course or you need assistance in the course that you're taking, my program can help you out. Right? I literally have thousands of solved problems and complete lessons. It's pretty powerful. I've been working on it for many, many years. Now, one thing you need to be working on is note-taking. If you are a student, all right, my golden rule of math is the following. Those students who take the best math notes always, always get the best math grades. And those students who don't show up to class with a paper, with paper and a pencil, uh, but they have their cell phone, okay, and uh, they are doing maybe homework in another class, uh, you get the kind of idea because they have their best friend that sits in the back of the class that takes better notes than them, and then they use their notes the night before the test you get the drift, right? Of course, I was doing all this kind of stuff way back in the good old days, but I paid a price until I finally figured out that there are no shortcuts when you're learning mathematics. You got to take great math notes. That's the number one thing you can do to help uh, yourself learn the subject. There's no way around it. Um, so hopefully that little message there motivates you to take better math notes. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, so we have A over B plus C over D. If you haven't, um, you know, given this problem a whirl, you know, maybe go ahead and pause the video and figure it out. And if you're able to do it successfully and you know what you're doing, then hey, you're good to go. But this is a very easy problem, okay? I can make, I can make a, a much more challenging uh, kind of situation. So you stick, we want to stick around. Even if you get this problem right, you want to kind of really pay attention to what I'm going to suggest, um, you know, it's an easy approach. Now, let's get into this. And the bay, way we're going to get into this problem is to model, okay, what's going on here with numbers. Okay, in other words, we're going to just... Make sure you understand how to deal with numeric fractions. All right, so these are numeric uh, fractions. So in mathematics, things that are um, have numbers, we will refer to those as um, uh, fractions, right? Numeric fractions. So over here, these are fractions, but uh, there's a couple different ways you can, uh, you know, technically express what's going on here. We would call these rational expressions, etc. But just kind of know that, you know, when you're studying this topic, you might um, be learning rational, uh, how to add rational expressions, okay? Because 
the word rational means uh, uh, fractional, okay, in algebra. I don't want to kind of go off on too many tangents, just so you know that we just don't call these just fractions. They are rational expressions, but they are, in fact, representing fractions just like we have these uh, number fractions over here. So let's go ahead and quickly review how to add number fractions because we're going to be following effectively the same procedure for uh, this rational expression situation over here. Okay, so how do we add number fractions? Well, what do we need? Well, I'm looking at the denominators and I'm like, hmm, can I add these guys together? Well, no, I can't because I don't have a lowest common denominator. The denominators need to be the same in order to add fractions. So for example, if I have 1 over 7 plus 3 over 7, oh, I can add the fractions because the denominators are the same. So that's 7. So I just add the respective uh, numerators. So that's 1 plus 3. So my answer would be 4 over 7. Okay, so no big deal um, when you're adding fractions with the same denominator. But, of course, in the real world, not every problem is going to be nice and easy like that. Here we have the denominators are different. So this is the situation where you need to go ahead and find the lowest common denominator. So what is the lowest common denominator? Well, it is 6. And if you don't understand the lowest common denominator, I actually have uh, more than a few videos on how to find the lowest common denominator because it, it, finding the LCD is not exactly for like a, a easy problems like this. It's pretty straightforward, but for more, you know, challenging situations, let, let's say like this. All right, if you're adding, uh, let's say these two fractions. Okay, what's the LCD here? Well, I'm sure I would get a lot of expressions like uh, like this. I'm like, well, I'm just going to get my calculator. I'm not even going to deal with this problem because these numbers are really big and hard. Well, guess what? Yes, you need to know how to deal with a problem like that. So check out my video on how to find LCD just to make sure that you understand, that you can handle a problem like that. Okay, Because how you find the LCD for larger numeric fractions is, um, again, the same way we deal with finding the LCD for, for larger, more complicated rational expressions. Remember, algebra. In essence, algebra is doing numeric math uh, just with variables, okay? Because the variables represent numbers. So your arithmetic, your knowledge of arithmetic is going to flow right into algebra. If you don't know arithmetic, you're not going to be able to do well in algebra, okay? And, if, and the converse is true. If you're strong in arithmetic, your algebra... Um, uh, learning is going to go uh, much better. Okay, so, but a problem like this, most of you probably say, oh yes, LCD is six. So uh, how do I write these fractions such that I have the denominator as six? Well, you would go like this. Oh, this one needs to be six. So I have to multiply this by three. And then if I multiply the denominator by three, I'm going to have to multiply the numerator by three because that's just three over three is what? It's one. Okay, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I'm really multiplying this fraction 1 half by a fancy looking 1. So I'm not damaging it. Okay, I'm not changing the value of that, right? So 1 times anything is itself. So if you're you know, wondering, well, aren't we changing the problem? No, we're not because we're just really multiplying this by 1. But it's a kind of 1, a fancy kind of 1, such that I can rewrite the denominator in a number that I want it to be. I want it to be 6. All right, so... Here I have 3 over 6, and so this one, I want this to be 6, so I'm going to multiply this by 2, and multiply that by 2. Okay, again, I'm not breaking the problem here, rewriting or changing the value of the problem, so I got 4 uh, over uh, 6. So now, finally, I can add the numerators, because I have the same denominator, so that's 6 over 3 plus 4 is 7. Okay, excellent, right? That is the answer, but... Um, and you need to know how to uh, handle fractions in that manner, okay? So uh, so I'm going to get to this problem here in a second, but let's just review, you know, how to deal with numeric fractions because this is what we're going to need. All right, so we know that the answer here is 7 over 6, okay? What's another way I can approach this problem? Well, this is one of my favorite things in math. I call it the bow tie method, okay? So... The bow tie, you know what a bow tie is. It's one of these crazy looking ties that looks like that. Very, very fashionable, very cool. No, do I wear a bow tie? No, I do not, okay? 
Uh, so anyways, if you were just curious about that, but they are pretty cool looking. Anyway, so we know that the answer is 7 over 6. Okay, now, what's another way I can do this problem? Again, we can use the bow tie technique. I have made so many different videos to try to teach the world this technique. And it's not a mystery. It's not, I don't own the t uh, this this uh, shortcut or hack or whatever like this, but you need to know this, all right? This is absolutely 100% like you need to learn this. That's why I do a lot of different videos on fractions to try to, you know, get people's attention on this. So what is the bow tie method? Well, the bow tie method is the following, okay? You take this denominator and you go, you're gonna, we're gonna be multiplying this way in this order, okay? This denominator times this numerator. Then we're gonna take this denominator, multiply by that numerator, and then we're gonna take this denominator multiplied by that denominator. Okay, so you see the pattern? It looks like a bow tie. So let's go ahead and do this now. So three times one is what? That's yeah, three. Now this is an addition problem. Okay, so we're gonna put an addition sign there. Two times two is four. Now these little cross things right here form our numerator over two times three is six. Oh, well, look at that. Three plus four is seven over six. Isn't that the answer that we came up with originally? Yes, it is, okay? So the bow tie method will work for adding and subtracting fractions, okay? 100% of the time, you can just be like, I'm not even gonna mess with the LCD, okay? So for example, if I have that three over 508 plus seven over 1206, I could be like, ah, forget the LCD, I'm not even doing that, I'm just gonna go this times that, uh, this times that, add those up, and then multiply this way, and my answer, I will be correct, okay? However, however, the one little drawback with the bow tie method is you may not get um, the lowest common denominator, so you always need to make sure that you uh, fully reduce, okay, your fractions. So sometimes um, you'll end up with the LCD, like in this case, but some other times you will not, okay? So just make sure your answer is fully reduced. However, your answer will be correct. You will have found the sum or difference of the fraction. So you got to know this. I have plenty of videos on, on this in my uh, pre-algebra and algebra playlist. This is one of these things you commit for the long run. Now, let's go back over here, A over B plus C over D, and let's use the bow tie method. The bow tie method works uh, not with just numeric fractions, it works with any kind of fraction situation. So let's go ahead and just tackle this. All right, this becomes very easy now. So it's gonna be D times A, okay? I'm just doing this uh, bow tie method here, D times A, so we can write that as AD, okay? Or A times D or D times A. Uh, algebraically, that looks like AD. So this is addition, I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna go B times C. So you guessed it, that's B, C in algebra. That's my numerator over B times D, B, D. And that is the answer. This is it. Okay. And you're like, what? That was that? That was super easy. I could even do that. Yeah, absolutely. You can do this, right? And you could do all kinds of variations of this. Let's, uh, let's kind of go over here. All right. What if I had uh, Z squared over X plus one uh, plus, oh, I don't know, Y over W. Right, a very scary looking type of situation here. Well, no uh, worries. We could just employ that bow tie method. So W times Z squared. So that would look like WZ squared. All right. And we're going to, this is an addition problem. So we're going to add it to X plus one times Y. So that'd be Y times X plus one over, and this would form our denominator, W over X plus one. Super easy. If you gave this to your teacher, your teacher would be so impressed. They would literally give you an A plus 1,000% and be like, you know what? You could just like teach yourself the rest of the class on your own. You're dismissed for the rest of the year. I mean, that's awesome. Okay. You really want to impress your teacher. You'd be like, wow, where did you learn this stuff? And you're like, well, I'm watching some crazy guy on YouTube teach me this stuff. Listen, I'm pretty sure your teachers probably taught you this as well, but I emphasize this because, you know, this is really one of those things that you need to know, okay, because fractions are everywhere in mathematics, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra, okay, and they can come up in various different forms. So, you know, learning how to solve a basic fraction problem like this, okay, in an easy manner, all right, and if you stick that into your long-term memory, 
then guess what? You're going to be able to handle a lot of different situations that you need to handle in algebra and beyond. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, educational in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That would definitely help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for me, uh, for someone who's obsessed with teaching math. My objective is always to make math clear and understandable and um, really to get you excited about the subject so you continue to learn it. Math is awesome. Just tell you that, you know, just, you know, 100 times a day. Math is cool. Math is awesome. Keep learning it. Believe me when I tell you, you can go much, much further in mathematics than maybe you think you, you know, feel like, ah, I can't, I can't even go beyond algebra. That's completely wrong. You could definitely, you know, get a degree in math if you'd like, okay? And if you do that, you'll have a lot of different opportunities, and maybe one day you'll be on YouTube making math videos. Who knows? But um, if you want my best math help, okay, make sure to follow those links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.